just some live feeding today. We're going to do some raw pipings. So we're going to go over what we've got. We'll have a look here. We've got different varieties of mice to feed, starting from large to small, to mediums in the middle. Obviously we've got different sizes taken in this rack, all juvenile though. So we'll just get started straight away. So here we've got a phantom spider hep hive. Have a look, it's a gorgeous snake. That's actually quite pretty that. It's nice, isn't it? What we'll do is, judging by the size of it, we can probably feed this one a medium. Now what you want to do when you're feeding, is you want to get a mouse that's the same size as the largest part of your snake. Now, so we'll take a medium mouse. And what we've got here is a jug of hot water. So we dip the snake's, sorry, the mouse's head in it for a couple of seconds. <laughs> dab it off. You won't dip the snake's head in. That wouldn't be too good. <laughs> Make sure there's no water on the mouse. And shake it. Have a little miss there. That's all right. Get it next time. There we go. A little shake like that. Make it think it's alive. There you go. Made that look quite easy, that, Connor. The first time. <laughs> so I put this on the floor here. We'll stack them on the same row that we got them from, three at a time. And then after we've fed the next three, we'll check on those and see if they've fed. So here we've got a phantom net pie. Typically, as Connor's going to lift these down without names, is uh, they're all in methodical order of, of morphs when people do actually come through anyway. Well, yeah. If I'm honest, Connor. That's true. So I'd say this one's probably a medium as well. So, you probably see. I'll show you the mouse next to the snake now. This wants to be about the same thickness as the thickest part, and that's the best way for you to judge the feed items for your, for your snake. So again, a couple of bit. What we're doing when we're shaking it is just going to replicate the natural movements of the animal. And if you move it like this when it's got the grip hold of it as well, it tricks the snake into thinking that animal's alive. There we go. Don't worry, we'll have one or two that to feed me. I was looking forward to one or two missing, but explain why they're in these boxes, please, Connor. Obviously when you get your snake from us, there's a couple of different enclosure sizes you can get based on the size of your snake. Now, most people that own royal pythons will understand is that it's, they can be really fussy feeders, they can be terribly difficult. So what we do is we keep them in nice small enclosures that are suits and similar to our animal burrows that would be in the wild. So that replicates their natural environment and it makes them feel more comfortable to feed. So if they're out in the open somewhere, big tank, say if they're in something like this size here, you can see this reticulated python, they'd just be overwhelmed and they wouldn't feel comfortable eating. So what we do is we give a nice small one. Look at this one, it can't wait. I know Connor might be making this easy, but we do have actually hundreds of snakes actually, <laughs> actually in. But typically in the smaller boxes. So three of them there. You can see the shelf's done, so we'll leave those there now. And what we'll do after we finish these next three is we'll come back to these ones and we'll check on them. And obviously we update our records on whether they're fed or whether they're not fed. That lets us know how we can next move forward when we can reach our snakes individually. So this one here is an entry head hive. Quite nice with the patterns there. So once again, we just pick a mouse. Size of the thickest part. So you want to get a bigger food item as possible, can not This large one's quite good. That's it too. So if for comments to jump here. There you go. Yeah. Is it asleep then? Yeah, it wasn't paying attention at all. There we go. Once again, shake it. Give it a move around. Now that snake thinks that animal's alive. And you can see, it restricts it there. So that's how it kill it in the wild. It'd take it to that prey, and it'd just push it like that. So you can pick it up, it'll still hold on. It's a lot stronger than you think. What we might do is to see if Con Connor will have a see if you can get the big ones to feed the same, eh? If we get enough, fe enough feedback, we'll uh, consider uh, Connor. <laughs> Look at it straight away. Show it like that. What's that? An orange dream fire or something? 
plugs, which is by Hectide. So anyone who's curious about how you tell it's a Hectide, normally there's a little orange ring there. The bottom half of this body there. Rachel, just in that comment there, is uh, just the client just asking there, yeah. why about the hot water? We just explain. So I'll show Obviously, you on the next one. If you want to pick a snake up and just explain. Snakes don't quite see like me and you. And come close. So if you come look at the snake's mouth, just round here, you see little pits. Now these are thermal pits, and this is where they pick up on heat in the wild. Uh, so what we do is we dip our mouse in the hot water to replicate the mouse being alive. So this is warm-blooded animal, it produces heat naturally. So we dip it in. Now this animal looks like it's alive to that snake, it looks like it's nice and warm. So the snake will see it much better. Spot it, and it'll strike. All we're doing is trying to replicate natural feeding as much as we can. So obviously by dipping it in the warm water it just gives the snake a higher chance of feeding than it would do if it didn't. So we just normally use we just normally boil the water off by the time we've come out to the shop and used it. It's cooled down a bit. It's cooled yeah. down so we don't burn the snake. Obviously you can't tell if it's not feeding yet. If we come look at this one here, you can see it's starting to feed. So what they do once they've struck is they work the way either to the head or the tail end. And then they'll obviously they dislocate the jaw. Sorry, I was on the wrong snake, mate. It's all right. And they can stretch and they can start to eat it like that. Did a good job there, actually. Yeah, flies, that's what we're feeding. Okay, so it's next week. We'll just do a couple more, Connor, and then. Uh... Typically, we do this probably, what, say twice a week. We have the racks downstairs. The ones on the shop floor. Here's a, here's a good chance to have a look. So this is a snake that is in shed. They're about to start shed. So it's just perfect there. So you can see there on its eyes how the glazed are almost milky. So this snake now can't see properly, so chances of getting this to feed are pretty low. So you can see it's quite stiff as well, it's not pulling up quite a bit more defensive. So you're most likely to get bit from the snake. I'm trying to do that. Just gonna show, you're just going to show that it won't feed, yeah. You typically now, this 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 will probably just give a defensive or a shy away if any of you normally experience this. And it had to pick it up. Yeah, it had to do it. Typical. Connor was hoping that won't feed, but obviously it has. No. So yeah, don't be discouraged if your animals are feeding bits and shy. It's pretty much normal. I'd say that's, uh, out of all my royal pythons I keep, only one will feed one be shedding the rest of them. Not even remotely interested. Obviously, I picked one there. You're actually getting quite a few people watching it. Even yeah. Tom's just said, "Hi." This one. Go for a medium, actually. So we've got here another fire head hide. Oh, let's see, Again, shake it. See it curl its neck back like that a little bit. Very nice shape. There you go. That's what. So, eight in a row. Eight in a row. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, let's get a last one here. So, this is the orange green pet hide. This one's decided to make quite a mess of its enclosure. So, obviously, we're actually keeping them clean and clinical on the shop floor because yeah. without hiding from problems, is is we have to because there's sheer volume of people we have coming through. We try and keep them clean and clinical. If it's easy spot problems with feces, blood, any kind of mites, anything we see any problems, it's just spotted straight away like this. So it's better for snakes all being just the amount of time we've got. So we'll see here. One of the hardest things to do sometimes is actually get the attention because they pulled up. If anyone is struggling, you can actually just, I can see Rachel's just commented there, but if you do come over, we will demonstrate anything we need to. And it's Holly, well. Holly's just said uh, hers has refused for four months. Now, Connor's only actually got mice out at the minute, but we do actually use rats and mice. Uh, but also, food size is important on tricky ones. What I think we might do on the next one, 
because the ones on the shop floor are all dialed in and usually they don't don't miss because these are the ones ready to go out for clients. Now we have got the non-feeding rack, which we will be honest, which is obviously uh, in our quarantine area. So I think we'll do another video because we have some snakes yeah, that don't feed for a month or two. We've got to be honest. Well, so obviously these ones are on small tubs, so it's much easier for them to be. Obviously if you've got yours in a uh, four foot or a three foot, depends on your deck or your heating. There's going to be so many different problems that present themselves. Um, yeah, quite happy about that. I've actually got one here that's finished it as well. And then we'll have a discuss how it's gone between everyone that drop us a message on the PM and we'll decide what we're gonna what we're gonna do to help help anyone yeah. that's feeding. Alright. Yeah. Happy Connor? So yeah, thanks for everyone tuning in. It's great, enjoyed it. Uh, Cheers. Leave some comments, anything you want to see next, we'll see what we do. Right, cheers.